Captain Leo Strider, the seasoned pilot of the intrepid spacecraft, the Peregrine, drifted through the expanse of space, dwarfed by the infinite stars that surrounded him. His mission was clear. Explore the uncharted sectors and extend humanity's reach into the galaxy. Without warning, the void rippled and from it emerged a fleet of alien ships, their designs both elegant and alien. The leader of the fleet, Commander Zorax, hailed the Peregrine. What fragile craft dares enter the domain of the Zipheron? He questioned, his voice tinged with amusement. The crew behind him sneered, their laughter a universal language of derision. Undeterred by the welcome, Leo responded, This fragile craft represents Earth's exploratory arm. I come in peace and curiosity. Curiosity turned into challenge when Zorax, still skeptical of the human's vessel, proposed a contest. Navigate the treacherous asteroid belt of Gravos. Success would grant Leo an audience on Zipheron. Failure would mean humiliation. Or worse. Leo accepted, his hand steady on the controls. The Peregrine dove into the belt, a lone ship against the relentless tumbling rocks. The alien fleet observed from a safe distance as the Peregrine weaved through the onslaught, its movements precise, almost preternatural. Finally, as the last of the asteroids dwindled, the Peregrine emerged on the other side, not a scratch on its hull. The aliens, silent now, regarded Leo with newfound respect. Commander Zorax's voice cracked through the comms, no longer mocking but measured. Well navigated, Captain Strider. Zifferin awaits. Prepare for the coordinates. As Leo set the course for the alien world, he knew he had not only changed the aliens' perception of humanity, but had also begun a journey that might change the course of human history. Upon arriving at Zipheron, Captain Leo Strider was greeted with a skyline that was a tapestry of alien architecture, soaring structures defying gravity and reason. The Zipherons, humanoid yet distinct with their translucent skin and ethereal glow, welcomed him as a competitor in their esteemed trial of agility and skill. The trial was a spectacle held once every cycle where pilots from across the stars showcased their prowess. Leo's challenge was to race against the Zipheron's finest pilot, Kaeltai, through the canyons of Draylor, a course notorious for its narrow passes and sudden lethal drops. Before the race, Leo examined the Peregrine, adjusting its thrusters for precision steering, knowing that raw speed wouldn't win this trial. Kaeltai smirked at the modifications, his own ship a marvel of Zipheron technology. As the race commenced, spectators gathered, their eyes fixed on the viewscreens. Leo's hands were calm, his focus laser-sharp as the canyons approached. Kaeltai took an early lead, his ship nearly a blur, but Leo remained undaunted. The Peregrine glided through the canyons, its hull inches from the jagged walls. Leo's strategy was to use the canyon's own draft to propel him forward, a technique no alien had dared to attempt. Risk turned into reward as the Peregrine caught up, now tailing Kaeltai's ship. The final stretch was ahead, a straight dive toward the finish line. It was now or never. With a burst of acceleration, the Peregrine shot forward. Kaeltai, taken by surprise, could only watch as Leo crossed the finish line first. The crowd erupted in cheers and disbelief. A human had outflown a Zipheron. Leo stepped out of the Peregrine, not as an underdog, but as a champion who had earned his place among the stars. The challenge was over but his adventure had just begun. As the cheers for Captain Leo Strider's victory faded, the leaders of Zipheron convened an urgent assembly. They revealed a secret that cast a shadow over the celebration. Commander Zorax, now seeing Leo not just as a pilot, but a potential ally, spoke of a looming threat, the Krylon Empire. Known for their relentless conquests, the Krylons had been sweeping across the galaxy, subjugating world after world with their formidable armada. Zipheron, a civilization of peace and progress, found itself in the crosshairs of this unstoppable force. Their technological marvels, which had always been turned towards the betterment of life, were no match for the Krylon's war machine. It was a dire situation that required more than just advanced weapons. It needed a new strategy, the kind that raw data and algorithms could not predict. The Zipherons believed that the unpredictable nature of humanity might hold the key to their salvation. Leo was taken aback by the revelation. Back on Earth, 
He was an explorer, not a warrior. Yet the honor and responsibility he felt towards these new allies stirred something within him. They offered him access to their vast libraries of knowledge, technology beyond human comprehension, and a fleet to command. In exchange, he would need to unite the scattered civilizations of the galaxy in an alliance against the Krylon threat. A plan was set into motion. Leo would first journey to the industrial moon of Kallax, whose shipyards could provide the much-needed firepower. Next, he would navigate the political mazes of the aquatic world of Hydros, whose strategic position could offer crucial staging grounds. Each world in the coalition would bring its unique strengths, forming a tapestry of united defiance against the Krylons. As Leo prepared for departure, his mind raced with strategies and contingencies. This was no longer just about exploration. It was about forging a legacy of unity in a time of division. The Peregrine was refitted, no longer just a vessel of discovery, but a harbinger of the gathering storm. The Zipherons watched as the Peregrine launched, not with fireworks, but with a silent promise, a promise of a common front, of shared burdens, and a collective fight for the future of the galaxy. This was the dawn of humanity's ascent to galactic significance, with Leo Strider, once a mere pilot, now the architect of alliances and the hope of many. On the neutral planet of Dexia, Captain Leo Strider attended the Grand Assembly of Races. Underneath the massive domed ceiling of the Assembly Hall, representatives from a hundred star systems gathered, their forms ranging from the silicon-based Quirillians to the nebulous gas-like swirlers of Vaporia. Leo stood before the assembly, his image projected onto a central hologram. Friends, he began, his voice resonating through the translators. The Krylon threat unites us in a fight for survival, but together we have a chance. He spoke of the Zipheron's plight and their technology that could, with strategic coordination and the combined might of the assembled worlds, halt the Krylon advance. His plea was met with murmurs of consensus, the clashing of views, and the brightening and dimming of lights as beings communicated in their native expressions. Hours turned into days as strategies were formulated. Leo's human insights into warfare, deception, unpredictability, and swift strikes were alien concepts to many. Yet these tactics gave the Coalition a new perspective, a different approach to facing the Krylon's brute force. A plan of action was crafted, leveraging the strengths of each civilization. The Florins of Greenworld would provide sustenance and medical knowledge. The cybernetic intellects of Mech Prime offered enhancements to the Coalition's weaponry. The ethereal minds of the Scion Collective promised intelligence that could predict Krylon movements. As the assembly adjourned, a shared battle strategy emerged. The Dexia Accord solidified their commitment. Every member world would prepare for war while protecting the peace within their alliance. Leo's role evolved from diplomat to commander, his ship the Peregrine, now a symbol of unity, retrofitted with the best technology from across the galaxy. In the waning light of Dexia's twin suns, the delegates departed, the Accord binding them in purpose. Leo watched as ships of all shapes and sizes departed, their trails painting streaks of light against the dark canvas of space. His heart swelled with a heavy blend of pride and responsibility. The weight of galaxies now rested on the Coalition's shoulders, with humanity at the vanguard. With the Dexia Accord in place, the United Front began a series of tactical skirmishes designed by Captain Leo Strider. The Peregrine, retrofitted with Zipheron technology, and armed with the collective knowledge of the Coalition, spearheaded the attacks, targeting the Krylon's vulnerable supply lines. Leo's plan was to disrupt the Krylon's momentum, to create chaos within their ranks. Small squadrons of Coalition ships, each led by captains trained in human guerrilla tactics, executed hit-and-run attacks on Krylon outposts. The skirmishes were not without losses, but each one taught the Coalition more about their enemy. In the void, there is no night or day, but the passage of time was marked by the reports of engagements that streamed in. News of a space station liberated here, a Krylon cruiser disabled there, each victory, no matter how small, was celebrated. The Coalition's morale surged with every successful mission, their confidence bolstered by their growing effectiveness. Leo watched and directed these skirmishes from the Peregrine, 
his ship becoming a mobile command center. He was everywhere at once, thanks to the instant communication systems provided by the telepathic scions. With each encounter, he adjusted strategies, always thinking several moves ahead. But the Krylons were not idle. They learned from the skirmishes, too, adapting their patrols, fortifying their stations. It was a high-stakes game of cosmic chess between the Krylon Empire and the Ragtag Coalition led by a human with a penchant for the unpredictable. As the skirmishes continued, a pattern emerged, a pathway to a possible major victory. Leo, with the counsel of his diverse team of advisors, began to formulate a plan that would not just disrupt the Krylons, but strike a significant blow that could change the course of the war. The Coalition had come together as separate streams, but now they flowed as one mighty river, and at the head of it all was Captain Leo Strider, a human whose name became known and respected in the war rooms and command ships across the galaxy. The stage was set for a pivotal battle, one that would test the resolve and ingenuity of the united races against the Krylon menace. The Coalition's series of successful skirmishes culminated in a major strategic opportunity, the siege of Krylon's heavily fortified outpost on the desert moon of Kavir. Captain Leo Strider and his allied commanders viewed this as a critical pivot point in the war. If they could capture the outpost, they would cut off one of the main supply routes to the Krylon Corps territories and deal a significant blow to their operational capabilities. As the Coalition fleet gathered around Kavir, the Krylons were ready, their defenses bolstered by recent skirmish learnings. The moon was encased in anti-aircraft turrets and patrolled by squadrons of Krylon fighters. The battle began with a high-intensity barrage from the Coalition's long-range artillery, but the Krylon's shields held strong, absorbing the impact. Leo, coordinating from the Peregrine, realized that a direct assault would result in unnecessary casualties. He opted for a daring plan. In a bold maneuver, he led a specialized task force on a covert mission to infiltrate the moon's surface. Disguised in stolen Krylon ships, they landed undetected their objective to disable the shield generators from within. The ground assault was grueling. Leo and his team faced intense combat as they navigated the labyrinthine corridors of the Krylon base. Every corner could spell a deadly ambush, and the air was thick with tension. Despite the risks, the team pushed forward, driven by the knowledge that the success of the entire coalition depended on their shoulders. Back in space, the battle raged on, the Coalition fleet, maintaining a holding pattern, engaged in a fierce exchange of fire with Krylon defenders. Ships dodged and weaved, their hulls lighting up with explosions and return fire. Meanwhile, on the moon's surface, Leo's team reached the shield generator complex. With a combination of human ingenuity and alien technology, they successfully sabotaged the system. With the shields down, the Coalition forces launched their full might in a decisive strike. The Krylon outpost, now vulnerable, was overwhelmed by the combined power of the United Races. The victory was hard-earned and costly, but it marked a turning point in the conflict. The fall of the Kavir outpost resonated across the galaxy, a testament to what could be achieved when diverse civilizations united under a common cause. Leo, once underestimated by his alien peers, was now hailed as a strategic genius his name synonymous with hope and resilience. As the dust settled on Kavir, the Coalition looked ahead, knowing that their fight was far from over, but for the first time, victory seemed within their grasp. With the victory at Kavir bolstering their morale, the Coalition prepared for what Captain Leo Strider declared would be the decisive battle against the Krylon Empire. Intelligence gathered from the previous skirmishes and the siege pinpointed the location of the Krylon command ship, a colossal vessel that served as both a flagship and a mobile command center, currently orbiting the gas giant Neptor. Leo knew that a direct confrontation with the Krylon command ship would be perilous. It was heavily armed and shielded, a behemoth capable of obliterating entire fleets. But the stakes were too high, and the time for half-measures had passed. Leo proposed a plan that was audacious and fraught with risk, yet it carried the potential to end the war if successful. The plan involved multiple phases, starting with a diversionary attack by the Coalition fleet to draw out the Krylon fighters 
and thin the defenses around the command ship. Simultaneously, a smaller, stealthier group led by the Peregrine would infiltrate close to the command ship to deploy a series of specially designed EMP charges that would disable its shields and communications temporarily. As the battle commenced, the cosmos erupted into chaos. Blasts of energy crisscrossed the void as the Coalition fleet engaged Krylon defenders. Leo aboard the Peregrine maneuvered through the melee, dodging devastating blows that lit up the space around him. His crew was tense, knowing that the success of the entire operation hinged on their precision and timing. With the Krylon fighters distracted, Leo's team reached the vicinity of the command ship. Deploying the EMPs at precise intervals, they watched as the behemoth's shields flickered and died, its hull now exposed. It was a surreal moment, seeing the seemingly invincible command ship vulnerable before them. Seizing the moment, coalition forces converged on the command ship, unleashing everything they had. The battle was fierce and unforgiving. Inside the Peregrine, Leo coordinated the final assault, his voice a steady calm in the storm. As the Coalition's firepower breached the command ship's defenses, a critical hit finally silenced the Krylon threat. As debris from the Krylon command ship drifted through space, a hush fell over the battlefield. The Coalition had done the impossible, defeating a seemingly indomitable enemy through unity and the strategic genius of a human pilot who had once been dismissed as too weak to be a threat. The victory was not just a military triumph, it was a symbol of a new era. Races that had once looked upon humanity with skepticism now saw them as indispensable allies. Captain Leo Strider, who had been laughed at and underestimated, had led them to a profound victory that reshaped the political landscape of the galaxy. In the aftermath of their monumental victory, the galaxy celebrated Captain Leo Strider as a hero whose tactical brilliance and courage had turned the tides of a war that many had believed unwinnable. The destruction of the Krylon command ship marked the collapse of their imperial ambitions, and across the universe, liberated planets began the slow process of rebuilding. The coalition that Leo had helped forge did not dissolve with the end of the conflict. Instead, it transformed into a galactic alliance, dedicated to ensuring that no single power could ever threaten the collective peace again. Leo was appointed as the first human ambassador to this new interstellar council, a role he accepted with the humility and responsibility that had characterized his actions during the conflict. On Zipheron, where he had once been mocked for his simple humanship and untested abilities, Leo now stood before a massive assembly of species, each one echoing their gratitude. Commander Zorax, who had once laughed at the notion of a human pilot making a difference, publicly acknowledged Leo's strategic genius, declaring that the galaxy owed its freedom to the courage and ingenuity of humanity. Leo used his new platform to advocate for a future where cooperation and understanding bridged the gaps between different civilizations. He spoke eloquently about the need for unity, not just in times of war, but as a foundation for peace and prosperity. His words resonated, ushering in an era of unprecedented intergalactic collaboration. Under Leo's leadership, the Council established peacekeeping forces, joint scientific endeavors, and cultural exchanges that enriched all member planets. Humanity's role in the galaxy had irrevocably changed, from isolated explorers to pivotal leaders in a united universe. As Leo looked out over the Council, a sense of accomplishment filled him. He had journeyed far from the lone pilot in the untested Peregrine to a leader who had not only seen the potential in his own kind, but had also inspired others to see it too. His journey was a testament to the resilience and potential of the human spirit, a beacon for all who dared to dream big and stand firm in the face of adversity. As the assembly adjourned, Leo walked out under the stars of a thousand worlds, not as a soldier, but as a peacemaker his legacy not just written in the battles he had won, but in the lasting peace he had helped build. The galaxy, once riven by conflict, now looked to a future bright with the promise of shared dreams and mutual respect, a testament to what can be achieved when diverse beings come together, led by someone who was once underestimated but proved to be their greatest champion.